Hey guys, next day's, um, or today's reading is from chapters 42 to 45 in Fish in a Tree. So that starts on page 217. Chapter 42 is titled, The Gifts of No Excuses, Scotch Tape, and Antibiotics. That's an interesting combination. Mr. Daniels calls me up to his desk. Here, I have something for you. I'm excited until I see it's a book. Not that I like hate them like I used to, but they still scare me. I stare at it, hoping he just wants to book talk it, not actually read it. I'd like you to read this. I open my mouth to speak, but my mind already rolling out, my mind already rolling out multiple excuses. He puts his hand up. Listen, Allie, I know it won't be easy. I know it will take time, but the thing is, my excuses become harder to say. I think you can read this one, and I want you to try. I reach out and take the book, which has a picture of a kid holding a goldfish bowl. I flip through the pages. The book isn't long, as far as the chapters go. That's a relief. I look up at him and hold his gaze. Normally, I'd be giving him all kinds of reasons I can't do this. But the thing is, Mr. Daniels could hand me a book as heavy as a boulder, and I'd try to read it, just because he asked me to. Okay, we are going to begin a unit on persuasive writing, Mr. Daniel says. So I'd like you to tell me, if you could have an unlimited amount of any single object, what would it be? Can't be magical, have special powers, or anything like that. Just an ordinary, everyday type of object. Well, obviously, Shay speaks slowly like she's talking to a little kid. Wouldn't everyone just choose money? Albert looks confused. Not something I see too often. The first thing I thought of was antibiotics. Really? Mr. Daniel steps forward, putting his hands in his pockets. There are many who can't afford medications, so I would like to give them out to people who need them all over the world. Then he seems to be thinking out loud. I wonder if antibiotics would help or hurt alien life forms. Well, Shay sputters, if you had an unlimited amount of money, you could just buy the medicine, right? I catch her rolling her eyes at Jessica. He shrugs. I'd rather just have the medicine. Scotch tape, Oliver yells. I want scotch tape. Most of us laugh along with him. And why is that, Oliver? Mr. Daniels asks. Because it's awesome. That's why. People don't think how tough life would be without scotch tape. Mr. Daniels nods. You may have a point there, Oliver. Or Elmer's glue. I love Elmer's glue. If I had barrels of it stored up in the garage, I could cover my hands with it every day and then peel it off. I love doing that. And it grosses out my mom. I tell her it's skin. Shay makes a noise. What? Oliver asks her. That's ridiculous, Shay says. What's ridiculous? He asks. The opinions of others are to be respected, Mr. Daniel says, but Shay and Oliver talk right over him. Wanting tape and glue, Shay says. No, it isn't, because I would use them with paper to make notes for my little sister. They make her feel better. Make her feel better? Mr. Daniel seems concerned. Is she ill? Oh, not anymore. But she had something that was called, well, it was long. It had five syllables, and she had to go to the hospital a lot to sleep over. And when she'd go, I'd visit her and bring her cards, and they made her happy. My mom says I was the one who helped her get better. I see. Well, Oliver, you get huge creativity points for today. Mr. Daniels muscles his hair. You're one of a kind, you know that, Oliver? Suki raises her hand. Grandfather says everyone is unique, special, unlike all others. That makes us each great. I like that, Suki, Mr. Daniel says, and you are indeed great. She remains seated but bows a bit. Thank you, sir. Mr. Daniels bows back and then stands up straight. In fact, you're all great, my fantastic fantasticos. Albert raises his hand and Mr. Daniels nods toward him. Excuse me, but just because something is unique, that doesn't mean it's good. After all, E. e. coli, a dangerous bacteria, is unlike all others. Point taken, Albert but I do like that people are all different. What if we all looked the same, thought the same, and had the same beliefs? That sounds boring, Keisha says. Indeed it does, he says. I think that I wouldn't mind being more like everyone else, but then I think I wouldn't want to draw like everyone else. I, mean, I wouldn't want to act like Shay or Jessica. All of a sudden, they're screaming. It's Oliver. Aunt murderer, aunt murderer. What is it, Oliver? Mr. Daniels asks. He points at Shay. Ant murderer. All I did was step on a dumb ant. What is he so freaked out about? 
You had no right to kill him. He was just walking by. You think it was a him? It's just a dumb ant. Who cares? I care, Oliver says, getting down on all fours with the tissue to check the ant, which is clearly dead. He cleans it up with the tissue and slips it into his pocket. You're going to keep it, she sputters. Well, I'm not going to just throw him in the garbage. I'll bury him at home. She begins to laugh. Shay, Mr. Daniel says, there will be none of that. She stops. We are all different. You care about some things and Oliver cares about others. We have to work to accept each other, even though we may not agree. Yeah, Oliver yells. And Oliver, Mr. Daniel says, I think you have to cut Shay a break here. It's pretty common for people to step on ants. So? Oliver, he asks and wait and waits. Oliver turns to Shay and mumbles, sorry, and climbs back into his seat. Thank you, Oliver. Mr. Daniels wanders over to Oliver's desk. I'm glad you apologized. Now that you have, he leans over and rests his hands on his knees. I'd like to add that you have one of the kindest hearts I know. You care so much about everything, always looking out for others. And that, my fine young fellow, is going to make you for a great man someday. Chapter 43, Set the World on Fire. After teasing that Albert, or after the teasing that Albert has taken for a shirt, Keish and I decided to do something for him. The teasing hasn't seemed to bother him that much, but it bothers us. So we made our own shirts to go with his. We walk him behind him while he is organizing his papers into piles. Albert, do you like our shirts? I ask. He turns around and stares at me with a shirt that says steel and Keisha with a shirt that says magnesium. I think it's the first time I've ever actually seen Albert truly confused. Okay, Keisha says, get it? They match your shirt. But not the genius guy alone on the rock in space with his robot things? Because I told you, I thought that was a bit creepy. Albert is still confused, so I interrupt. The shirts match because the three of us together are going to set the world on fire, like Mr. Daniel says. Yes, he says, flint, steel, and magnesium are commonly confused or used together for fire starters. I get it. The corner of Albert's mouth twitches, which is like something or someone else doing cartwheels down the hall. Without thinking, I yelled to Shay across the room. Hey, you tease one of us, you tease all of us. Shay has an expression like she's just smelled rotten meat and makes it and it makes Keisha and me laugh really hard. Then I pat Albert on the back. Just wanted you to know that you can always count on us. Well, that would make you either a set of fingers or an abacus. Albert, seriously? Keisha shakes her head and then leans forward. It means we think you're a cool dude. We're allies, I smile. He goes back to arranging his papers. Yes, I know, he says softly. I am most grateful. Chapter 44, Tales of a Sixth Grade Something. <clears throat> Travis drives me to school because the project I did for a book report is too hard to take on the bus. I've always used, I've always used my art for projects at school but this is a three-dimensional scene on a piece of wood, a scene from Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, the book that Mr. Daniels gave me to read. What's gotten into you, Travis asks. Since when do you smile like that on a Monday morning? I'm going to school feeling proud for once, so I just sit there continuing to smile. Hey, he says, hitting me in the side of the leg. I'm happy to see you so happy about school, Al. He laughs a bit. To be honest, I wouldn't mind feeling some of that. When I get to class... Lots of kids surround me. I guess it's because the project is so big. Shay's the first to come over. She looks at the kitchen scene. <coughs> Excuse me. I've made mostly a paper, including a working light over the sink that Travis helped me make. How'd you do that? Shay asks, pointing at the lit light over the sink. There's a battery underneath. She looks disgusted. And you made that? Oliver comes over and grabs for the light. Cool. Before I can move, he knocks the wire which makes the light go off. She begins, Oliver, you're such a... Leave him alone, I interrupt. If I don't care, you shouldn't. She and Oliver are both wide-eyed, but for different reasons. Oliver smiles a little. It's okay, Oliver. I'll fix it. She is squinty-eyed for a bit and then laughs in a way that is louder than normal. She's pointing at my project. I read that book like four years ago, and there aren't any soldiers in it. She says, pointing at a picture hanging on the wall of the room I made. Max comes over. What's up? She has a picture in there that has nothing to do with the book. Book report. Allie should be about the book. Well, I say, feeling a little warm all of a sudden. 
Most houses have art on the walls, so I'd figure I'd decorate the room and drew a picture of my dad in his uniform. Wait, Max brightens. Your dad is in the army? Yeah. That's cool. What does he do? He's a captain with the tank division. Your father drives tanks? Seriously? That's awesome. I look up. Thanks. He holds up his fist to, bump, to fist bump me. And as he walks away, he tells the other guys about my dad. From the look on Shay's face, she can tell that her insult backfired on her. Then Mr. Daniels comes over. He's wearing a tie with books on it. Wow, Allie, that is amazing. He leans forward and drops his voice. I'm really proud of you. My response is stuck in my throat. I watch a series of movies in my head, trying to see a time when a teacher has said this to me. There isn't one. Allie, he says. Still, I can't speak. Usually when I find myself unable to speak, it's because I'm humiliated. I like this feeling a lot more. Chapter 45, my brother's question. I'm working on pictures of cupcakes, the talk for an ad campaign for Keisha's business. She's asked me to help her. It feels great to have someone ask me for help. As I draw, I think about my sketchbook and how I love it, but don't draw in it as much anymore. It used to be the only thing that made me happy. Now I have other things too. I hear Travis chewing gum in the doorway before I see him. Without looking up, I say, Mom told you to stop chewing gum like a goat. The whole room is not supposed to hear you. He goes silent. Weird. I finish erasing a line and look over at him. He looks kind of stiff, hands stuffed in his pockets. Then he takes one hand out and brushes his chin with his fist. Travis, what's wrong? I just wanted to ask you a question. You want to borrow money or something? He does that half smile of his and shakes his head. But I can see the seriousness. You can ask me anything you want, Travis. What is it? He comes over and sits on the side of the bed. That teacher of yours, Mr. Daniels, what does he do after school with you? You mean chess? He shakes his head. No, the reading. What does he do? I mean, do you just sound out words and stuff? I put, my, I put down my pencil. Well, we talk about words, but it's not the same as the other teachers. Like we never use paper, ever. He has me write letters in blue or pink sand, or sometimes in shaving cream. Really? So you can read now? Well, not yet, but it's getting easier. It could be like running up the side of a building sometimes. I get so tired, but I'm doing better. So it helps what he does? Yeah, it's more fun than learning the old way. Sometimes it's boring because he'll do a list of words that have some of the same letters in them, like light and might and night. He writes the letters that repeat in every word in red and then the rest in black. Then he makes... Then he makes the words into pictures so I can remember them better. I flip my paper over. Here, I'll show you. And I write sun with all these little lines around it pointing outward to look like the sun. And it really helps you remember it? Yeah. And he also has these sheets of plastic that I can see through but are different colors. He puts those over pages and it makes the headaches better. It's like turning the brightness down on a computer. It's weird. No more headaches from reading? Really? Well, I still get them, but they're not nearly as bad, like a little stick hitting my head compared to a baseball bat. Travis smiles and stands up. Well, I'm glad he's helping you, and I'm glad that you have Keisha and Albert squared. You're doing great. You're doing great too, Travis. Not long before you'll open up Nickerson Restoration, right? He nods once and turns to leave. He doesn't talk about the neon sign he'll have or the big rolling tool cases or anything. I miss hearing his mouth running like a motor about all of his plans. Travis. He turns. Yeah? I could try to help you. Nah, he says, brushing his chin with his knuckles. I don't need you to do that. I was just wondering. Okay, so we're going to stop there. We will read the next couple chapters in the next lesson. There is a Google form attached to this assignment. Please answer the questions using your race answers. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.